In this course, we'll be building a classifieds Android app where users can post items for sale and search for items to buy. They'll be able to contact people via email when they want to purchase something. Before I talk about what we're doing, let's take a look at a full application demo. We'll start at the login screen. There's nothing special here, just a basic login screen. Users can register and then when they verify their email, they'll be able to log in. Here's a quick look at the register screen. All right, now let's log in. My login is mitch at tabian.ca and my password is password. Okay, now I'm logged in. Once they log in, they'll come to this screen. The first thing you'll notice is probably the basic material design. It's very basic since the main focus of this app is to showcase the advanced search functionality provided by Elasticsearch. As you can see from the top here, the app uses four tabs for navigation. In the search tab, we can search for items that have been posted. So if I search for something like BMW, I'll get matches that are likely cars. And here we see a BMW SUV. I can then click on the post to get more information. If I scroll down, I see the title, the description, the price, the location, and an option to contact the seller. If I click contact seller, an email opens up where I can let the seller know that I'm interested in their post. There's also an option up here to save the post to what I call a watch list. So if I click it, I see a toast message saying added to watch list. We'll talk more about that in a minute. There's also more specific options the user can choose from in terms of refining their searches. If we click on this magnifying glass right here, we see some more search options. We can select city, province or state, and a country. By leaving the options blank, I search all cities and all provinces or states. Now let's check out the watch list tab. You'll notice right away that the BMW we looked at earlier has been added to the watch list. This is where you can save items if you don't want to forget about them. Similarly to the search tab, we can now click on the item and view its properties again. The only difference here is now if we click up here, it will remove the item from the watch list instead of adding it. And as you can see, it was immediately removed. The next tab is for posting items. The first option is choosing an image for your post. You can either select one from memory, or you can take a new one with the phone's camera. Then we have a title, description, city, province or state, country, and finally a contact email address. The last tab is just used for signing out. You can click sign out and then you're redirected to the login screen. Let's talk a little bit about the details of Elasticsearch and how you can use it in your Android applications. The most important of which is why should you care about Elasticsearch? What value does it provide you and your arsenal of developer tools? If you have any experience using Firebase for the back end of your mobile applications, then you know there's no way to search for strings unless you know the exact value you're looking for. For those of you who are familiar with the database language SQL, this can be easily done using an SQL-like query. For example, if I'm searching for a friend named Elizabeth and I don't know how to spell it, I can just search E-L-I and then use a wildcard, and I'll get a bunch of options to choose from. The query would look like this. Select all from users where name like E-L-I star. That would search the users table for any names that started with E-L-I. The kind of results you'd see are Elizabeth, Elise, Eli, and so on. In short, the Firebase framework has no way to perform queries like that. So we need to integrate another tool to improve the search functionality. Fortunately, Google has a number of products that are easily integrated with Firebase for this exact purpose. They're known as Elasticsearch tools. Between you and me, I think Google specifically left this search functionality out of the Firebase API so developers would have to use their Elasticsearch tools. Why would they do that, you might ask? Because none of them are free to use. They're all extremely useful, but unfortunately, you have to pay for them. Before you panic and run away because you're one of those people who refuses to pay for any developer tools, you can relax because much like most other Google products, the Elasticsearch tool is basically free as long as you're not using it for a production app. So if you're just here to learn about Elasticsearch and build a cool app, then you have nothing to worry about. If you're still watching this video, you're probably intrigued by this whole Elasticsearch thing. So what exactly are Elasticsearch tools? Basically, Elasticsearch tools create an index of your data, so in other words, a copy or a sort of copy, on an external server the data is organized in a specific way and then we can send request queries to the server using advanced search algorithms built into the Elasticsearch framework. That might have sounded a bit complicated, but I assure you it's very simple to set up and it's very simple to use. 
Basically, once we set it up, it actively copies the Firebase database, and then we query it using HTTP requests. We'll be using the retrofit library to perform the requests. That's all for the introduction, and I'll see you in the next video.